the Smart Chiropractor Show. It is featured guest time, and we're going to head up to the tundra of North Dakota for our next featured guest, Dr. Chris Housen of Drop Release. He's a practicing chiropractor and entrepreneur and somebody that has also developed hardware in the chiropractic space. Oh my gosh, that makes me anxious just thinking about how, how much that takes to get a, across the finish line. Jason and I had the opportunity to sit down with Chris not too long ago and explore all of that and more. And today's featured guest is Dr. Chris Housen. Hey, docs. I'm Dr. Jeff Langmaid here with my co-host, Dr. Jason Deitch, and it is time for our featured guest. Today, we are speaking with a, a friend of mine that I've known for a little while, uh, Dr. Chris Hounson, founder of Drop Release. We're going to talk about what is Drop Release. We're going to talk about how he came up with the idea. Much, much more on today's episode. Chris, th thanks for taking some time with us today. Thank you, guys. You got it. And I want to pick it up right at the drop release conversation. So any docs out there, you just showed us, showed us the tool before we hopped on. This is something that, as we've come to understand, you've sort of invented and brought to life, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, where did this come from? You know, what is it? I'd love for you just to kick off the conversation with what is drop release and how'd you think of it? Okay, absolutely. Um, so drop release is a soft tissue instrument. And here it looks like this. We get a little tangential light on there. You can see it. It says drop release and it's got some plus and minus on it. Um, so basically, um, it's a T bar, you know, for a soft tissue work T bar, combined with the idea of a of a drop piece table, like a, like the Thompson drop table. And um, it came about because when I was in school, I had the privilege of learning from a, a really good doctor who was treating a lot of high level. Uh, figure skaters and hockey players and such, uh, and uh, working on hip flexors, especially hip flexors, scalenes, things like that, with using um, the concept of fast stretch to cause muscle relaxation. Um, and he was doing that with his hands uh, on the patient on a drop piece table. And I, I did that for, for years and years, uh, probably for the first 10 years that I was in practice. Uh, I, I practice in Grand Forks, North Dakota. So, I mean, we're up here in God's country, it's uh, noticed that I get a little less color to my uh, my skin than you folks do because it's 40 below zero wind chill outside right now. Um, so I'm staying in my cave. Um, but uh, one thing we do have up here is a lot of hockey players. Um, so anybody who's treated hockey players or say sprinters, people like that, you know that uh, they get really gnarly hips. Their uh, hip flexors get extremely tight and that can cause, uh, you know, all kinds of other problems. Uh, so being able to get in there and especially around the corner of the pelvis into the iliacus, uh, things like that, in order to use a drop piece to add a little pre-stretch on the tissues and then drop the table with my hands, um, that would put that fast stretch on and uh, the mechanism is it would activate the Golgi tendon organ reflex that then is it's a spinal cord level reflex. So it's almost an instant change. It's like, you know, uh, similar kind of opposite to the spindle cell reflex. You check with a reflex hammer um, it works just as quick. Um, so I, I did that for years and years. Like I said, until I um, treated a patient um, where my drop piece wasn't very conveniently uh, located. So she had this problem with her hamstrings and I was trying to get into her hamstrings. And at some point, I mean, it was, it was almost like a Saturday night live skit, right? I mean, I eventually I had her like crawled all the way off the front of the table with her hands on the, on the ground. And I, you know, using that pelvic drop piece on my Lloyd, uh, um, 402 to, to get that thing to, to drop and work. And, and, you know, I, I said to myself, you know, man, if I had a, if I had a T-bar with a drop piece in it, I could get in there, right? And I tried to use my activator, but to, in order to get enough pre-stress, you'd bottom out that spring and there would be no oomph left, no no pop left. Um, and I tried to, you know, use other, other devices and nothing really got in there. So um, just kind of the way my mind works. And I think a lot of us as chiropractors are problem solvers and, you know, figure out the puzzle ahead of you. Um, I went into my workshop and I put something together out of wood and I ordered some parts off, uh, off the internet and got some springs and ball bearings and, you know, do hickeys and put them together and got a working prototype uh, after that, like the next week. And it, uh, kind of evolved from there. Um, it just, uh, basically just makes it 
very, very rapid uh, impact on joint mobility uh, and anywhere in the body because you control line of drive exactly. Like you don't have to have a, a drop piece positioned it, because it's right there. So that's basically uh, what it is. So now it's a it's a, a milled aluminum piece of uh, machinery here, and I, I know Jeff, you've got one in the somewhere there in the mm -hmm. in the attic, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it's nice and heavy, right? I mean, you could uh, in a, in a pinch, you could bludgeon somebody with this thing. If you had to. But, <laughs> yeah, so that's what it is. I still use it mostly on uh, on. I, I love it for ball and socket joints, and uh, which I've uh, anymore. I, I look at those all the time every patient that comes in basically if it's an upper body complaint i'm looking at shoulders if it's a lower body complaint i'm at least looking at hips sometimes shoulders also just because those uh those joints are so connected to everything that we do you know chiropractors we come out and everybody thinks spine 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 but that spine has to move through space and the thing that moves that spine through space is uh you know upright locomotion which is completely dependent on the ball and socket joints of the hip. And if those aren't moving kinetic chain model, you know, something else is going to have to move. So if we can keep, uh, if we can keep the machine uh, operating the way it was designed to, to run, everything works better. That is awesome. And, and uh, you're, you're right. I, it, you got to love the, wouldn't it be great if there was a tool that would, and the next thing you know, you're, uh, you're, in, you're inventing it literally. That's phenomenal. No. Chris, T tell us, I guess, the evolution. Uh, you're not the only one who uses it. Obviously, you've invested some time and money into, you know, building not just a, a prototype, but an actual product. Uh, talk to us about, you know, docs are using it. Is there training? How do they know, you know, how to integrate this into whatever current protocols they're using? Um, right. So, uh basically the training I have, I have a, a bit of a course a video course on my website. Uh, it, it needs some improvements. So we're, we're getting to that. But, um, uh, the, the, when the tool arrives, it, it ships with a, with a manual here, a little backwards manual. And it's got, you know, broken down by, by joint and joint movement and kind of put this here, do this kind of instructions. Um, and, and, you know, of course, this thing, uh, I, I did my first live um, bigger format uh, booth, really. I, I, I was at, uh, at Forward 19, right? We saw, we saw you, you were out there with that one, Jeff, uh, in, uh, at Logan. Um, but then I uh, did our the Northwestern Homecoming, which is, you know, Northwestern is about four hours from here. That's my alma mater. And, uh, like, Two weeks later, COVID slammed the whole country uh, into a, your, our homes, right? Um, so now we're just getting back out there, and it's going to be um, trying to put together um, a, an in-person course, you know, because it's it's one of those things where you know, everybody says, well, what is it, just an activator? You know, or somebody comments, oh, activator uh, 2021, here we go, you know. Uh, well, but you know, it, it's uh, completely different premise and and it's one of those things you almost have to get your hands on it to to understand to feel it and uh, and to see how it works but uh, yeah there's a we have a lot of videos out on the on the website and um, and have have shared a lot on social media and uh, have again more of that coming but uh, you know just got to get some more some more video out there because that, that that's kind of where the proof is at is, is seeing it seeing this thing work and how fast it is I, I, I love it, Chris. And I, I, you've, I've been uh, fortunate to be uh, treated by, by the founder, by you <laughs> in my, in my right here, actually, a matter of fact, a little yeah, while back. Right. So I can definitely uh, understand and attest to that. One question I have for you, I, there's, there's, there's a good amount of docs that are, you know, fixers, they are entrepreneurial, they're interested. What was maybe, I'm going to switch to the kind of the business side outside the clinical. What was maybe a, a surprise, a stumbling block, a hurdle as you're like, I'm pumped, I'm bringing this thing to fruition, right? You know, I mean, there's, you got manufacturing, all this sort of stuff. What was maybe a, a hurdle or, or a surprising thing that you've learned along the way of bringing an idea to market, which is awesome. Not that many people do. And I think there's a lot of fear of, of what it entails. So maybe, you know, what was, what was something that you had to overcome? Uh, well, I, I think just the, the whole, um, process of patenting is if, if 
if you no, know, if you've ever been through it, it it's uh, it's a long like I don't know how people used to do this, right? Like where uh, oh, you know, so and so just invented something and he got the patent. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's just that's by far been our biggest expense this whole way through is 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 patent process and you know, patent and then uh, oh, we need to update the, our claims or something else, so we. Uh, Let's get a second patent on it, right? So we have a second patent. And then if you're going to ever do anything internationally, we need to patent some other places. And so we got a few, we had a few other patent, uh, patents in other countries and just uh, the expense that goes into that kind of thing. Cause then there's yearly upkeep on those, mm-hmm. right? It's like, it's not just a one time, you know, pay for your patent and then go. It's uh you got to pay every so much money every couple of years and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I mean, anything else other than that i guess i'm uh, i know that it, it's it's not easy to do like what you guys are doing and being out there in content creation and then being out there in front of front of stuff and getting the systems in place with uh the fulfillment and uh, making sure that you're out in front of people and getting good video made and you know that kind of stuff is, is definitely a challenge yeah that's uh exactly where i wanted to go what 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 have you found to be uh I guess some of the ways in which you're able to bring people to your practice by highlighting your differences. Uh, you know, I mean, every chiropractor has the word chiropractor, you know, <laughs> as their sign. Um, and you know, doing videos and really sort of showing people, you know, not just hey, I'm a chiropractor, but I'm different. But in mm-hmm. fact, creating mm-hmm. content, doing videos, and putting that, you know, unique messaging of not just what chiropractic is, but here's what I do at my practice. Here's what makes us unique and different. What can you share with people about, you know, what you've been doing, what's been working, what are some of the frustrations, what have been some of the successes? Chiropractors, you know, especially our audience are, you know, all trying to figure out how do I get my message out to people? And, and right. should, I, should I share what makes me different? Should I share what makes me, uh, you know, what they expect? What, what's been your experience? Uh, well, I'm fortunate to practice in a pretty small area here. Um, I mean, just North Dakota in general has, you know, not even 800,000 people, um, the whole state. And uh, I'm in a, a town of about 50,000 ish, something like that is my practice. And I actually uh, work for the big biggest medical system in, in our town. Um, so another another doctor and I um, work here. And so, you know, it, it and I was in practice in town for about six years previous to that. So really we were small enough at that point where word of mouth was, was the biggest thing that got the name out there. And then, um, you know, again, with a huge amount of people who play hockey and such, and everybody knows everybody. Um, it's been, uh, I've been very fortunate that I don't have to do a whole lot of marketing. Right. Um, I'm basically just here and people know me and, and they come, they come in and they kind of know what they're going to get a lot of the time. Um, obviously I, I'm a more of an extremity type of a, of a provider. And I, I work in a building with, uh, you know, several dozen really good uh, physical therapists. So, you know, I'm, I'm not doing as much rehab. I do a little bit of hands-on, uh, muscle work stuff. Um, I mean, I use this drop release and it's super fast and you get people's eyes get real big when they walk in the room and, and they can't, uh, lift their arm past here and then they walk out and they can, you know, reach straight up and go do kind of what they want to do. Um, so it's just, it's just kind of the results side of it. Right. Um, and I listen to you guys, yeah, your podcast, and, and uh, I like, I really like the stuff that you guys are doing with the stores, right. Yeah. Online that, you know, buy so people can find your favorite things and stuff. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, that's great. If I was, if I was still in private practice, I'd be all over that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, there's all these, all these things like that. And, um, but, um, yeah, the one, I guess the thing that makes us different here is the amount of time we spend on, uh, on, on extremities and how things work together. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just kind of getting into the DNS world and getting some things to help, uh, stabilize new range of motion once we find it um but yeah i mean i I get it all kind of comes down to word of mouth here honestly um and i'm again working for a big system i don't necessarily get to market myself so to speak but you know i guess so that's i'm not the best guest as far as that side of the world goes Mm -hmm. right so 
That, that's all right. I, I, I appreciate the fact that you keep up with it. You follow, even if it doesn't directly impact your practice, I think is awesome. One question that I have for you, you mentioned you're really being focused on you know extremities by the nature of your interests mm-hmm. and everything else. I love the scratching your own itch, then, you know, therefore creating an extremity kind of first, you know, tool to help you along that path. One of the things you mentioned on that you know, is the differences between a, a drop release and uh, utilizing a drop release in practice and utilizing an activator. Maybe highlight just a few of those because you're right. Docs might look at the tool and just see it and they might say, golly, I think I already have that going on in my practice. I think these are complementary items, not competitive at all. I just would be interested to know your thoughts on that and maybe yeah. highlight one or the two of the primary differences so docs out there uh, can o- you know, o- open their mind to something they might be unfamiliar with. All right. Well, well I mean, Dr. 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 Fuhrer himself, uh, you know, of Activator, uh, would, would tell you, too, it's a completely different, uh, total, totally different animal, right? The Activator puts out its own impulse, and it's a very metered, specific impulse uh, designed to help adjust segments, correct? Um, where this tool is more about building up the tension in the muscle, and then you have that rapid, um, basically, there's a drop mechanism inside the tool, so you go from having that tension, and then when the when the mechanism releases, it transfers from tension to speed until it bottoms out in there, and then all of that speed with the pre-stress is added to that muscular tendinous junction of, of the muscle, and you get that rapid stretch. Um, so it can hit it hits a lot harder than a than a uh, activator does, and you're not aiming at bony prominences with this. It's not an adjusting tool. This is a soft tissue uh only tool i know some people use it for other things but that's, that's this is the the purpose uh, and and honestly i wouldn't want to be a, a, adjusted with it it wouldn't feel very good uh but we're looking we're looking at a little bit of a, a higher amplitude uh, thrust when it does hit and it's not so much as a thrust as a very rapid uh stretch like think about like if you've ever manually engaged the seat belt lock in your car Right. If you pull it, nothing happens. But if you give it that, bam, you know, it's kind of that, yeah. that quick pull like that, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, and, and the activator, you know, you can do it. You can use it in some places uh, and get similar results. Like if you uh, use a little hand uh, pre-stress by pulling on the tip and, and uh, getting into some suboccipital areas, maybe some scalenes, uh, real shallow uh, tissues like that. Or that aren't very bulky, but uh, you're not going to get into somebody's, you know, piriformis through all the all those overlaying muscles and make that uh, activate those uh, Golgi tendon organs with an activator. Um, I guess so that that's the biggest thing. Like rather than creating an impulse, it the tool drops into itself, yeah. and it's just the uh, the physics of that uh, energy transfer. That is awesome. If docs are watching and they're curious and they go, this is interesting. I use tools now, but this sounds like it's, uh, you know, a tool that I have a gap, uh, you know, and I don't have a, a, a tool for. Where, where would you recommend docs learn more? What, what would be a next step for them to you know, um, watch your videos or your book or anything like that? I would say to get on to uh, droprelease.com. Check that out. Um, and uh, there's there are a lot of videos in there in the media tab. Um, and, you know, follow us on social media or on Facebook or on Instagram. We're not, we're a little more sporadic than we should be. I'll go, I'll go really good and be uh, daily for a couple of months and then I'll disappear for a while and then I'll fire it back up again. But, uh, that's just, uh, you know, the, the nature of this beast, I guess. Um, yeah, but, uh, I guess, um, uh, that would probably be the, the best way to do it. And, uh, you know, we have. People ask, well, is there a demo? Can I try it out? Whatever. Um, I've always, we'll always take it back. If somebody gives it a good run and they don't like it, they, you know, we'll, um, we'll take it back. And into the, you know, the several hundred of these floating around out there, I've only ever had to take one back. And uh, when I checked it out, I think uh, there was actually a defect in there. So it wasn't working the way it was supposed to. So, um, you know, that's, uh, user error on uh, the assembler's part on that one. <laughs> Going back to when you asked me before about if the people see this thing, they think, oh, I already use tools. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of versions of, of the original Graston uh, tool out there, right? Like the, the IASTM type of tools. People see that and they, and they know what that does. They know how to, you know, everybody's experienced it. They've used it. Um, 
this is really uh, its own thing, right? It's it's there's nothing else out there exactly like it. Like I, I think back to like I reached out to Doctor uh, Doctor Fuhr at uh, at Activator because he he's been here, right? He's been at where I'm at, or he's came up with something new that people had never seen it before, and like okay, so what is what does this thing do, right? But now I mean now his this stuff is out there. So then, um, you know, he kind of broke the ground on this instrument assisted stuff. Um, so people automatically make that connection, but yeah, it's just, so it's a matter of educating people into that. This is not something that you already have. Uh, and there, I do have some video on there on my website, um, uh, where you can use this fast stretch technology, the technique like I used to do, um, by hand just to see how well it works and how there is a place for it. And, um, uh, and, and I go through and I, 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 there's a whole webinar on their linked on the media page and uh, it goes through the Yonda's biggest muscles that are tend to be tight and short. Mm-hmm. And it goes through and shows how, how to address them with a drop piece table or a Thule board in your hands. And also uh, with a, with the drop release instrument. And, you know, just, I would say if somebody's wondering about this, um, give that a whirl, you know, find your, find your thing. I mean, it, you start checking shoulders and hips and you're going to find it all the time. And if you can get, find a way to release somebody's lats and subscaps and hip flexors, you're going to help a whole lot of people uh, and help, help a lot of people stay better longer. Right? That is what I see. Well, Chris, I really appreciate you taking the time and coming on. I have two things to say uh, to the docs out there watching and listening. Maybe three things, actually. Number one is uh, you got to check out uh, the page. Even if you post a little inconsistently, your meme game is pretty strong at times. So check out the check, check that out and check out drop release. Number two is if you are doing soft tissue currently, save your thumbs, your wrists, your arms. Get a tool to help you along the way so you can help more people over a longer period of time. And then the third part about it, Chris, is offering our smart chiropractor members a discount code. We're going to drop that down below. This video is going to be out for a while. So we, I'm going to hold a uh, calling it out here. So look down below, be sure to use that discount code. Thank you so much, Chris, for coming on, talking about what you've developed and thanks for being a, a creator in the chiropractic space. I think it's fantastic. I got to throw in there too. I, uh, listening to that last podcast, I, I appreciate, uh, Jason quoting Hans and Franz in there. <laughs> Hear me now, believe me later. <laughs> You don't hear that one every day. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for knowing the source. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't do, use the voice. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot. Right on. Thanks, Chris. You're great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, that was Chris Housen of Drop Release. And uh, great guy. Fantastic product that he's come up with. In a really interesting story, an extremity-focused doc who is out there and realized that he wanted to have a little bit of help saving those thumbs, saving those wrists and arms over a long career, helping people in those big muscle groups, they are not easy to get into. So check out Drop Release. Jason, what was your takeaway from our interview with Chris? Uh, besides his great memory about uh, my uh, <laughs> quoting Saturday Night Live, um, you know, I love docs who take action. You know, one of the core values I have is creativity and creation. Uh, it is, you know, having an idea and not just going, well, that's silly. What if I fail? That'll cost too much. I'm too busy. And every other legitimate excuse, you know, we probably can come up with to prevent ourselves from doing something that ultimately can be of tremendous benefit to others. Now, why is it important for it to be a benefit to others? Because the only way to help yourself is to be of more value to other people. And so, uh, yeah, it, this was not just a, hey, here you go. Uh, nah, you know what? That's crazy. It'll never work. He did it. And you always say, I, I'm going to quote you now, uh, again, without the Schwarzenegger accent, uh, results follow action. He took action and he's getting results. And it's just a wonderful thing to see those ripple effects out in the universe. I, I admire it and it's wonderful. And what a good deal. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to The Smart Chiropractor. We are posting videos on how you can market your chiropractic practice in a way that teach and invites consistently. We have found that is the magic formula to big time growth. So if you like this video, be sure to comment down below, smash that subscribe button, or visit us at thesmartchiropractor.com.